All right. Uh, about Ayn Rand Institute relations or your relations to other groups, why are you so so like hateful towards libertarians when they seem to be the closest ally to your ideas? Well, I'm only hateful to some libertarians. There's some libertarians who I love, who are great, who I, su who I support, who I've worked with, uh, who I've been on panels with, who I've done all kinds of things. Um, the ones I hate tend to be the ones who tend to be the rabid anarchists, the people who believe that anarchism is a solution. And as I said, in my debate with an anarchist in Poland, I consider anarchism, and you can include so-called anarcho-capitalism in that, I believe that it's as bad as communism and fascism. I believe that it is the devil. It is really, really, really destructive to human life. I know I've just offended a bunch of you. I can see it on Sebastian's face, but that's the problem of video, right? But that is the reality of what I believe, right? I think anarchy leads to nothing, and I've said this dozens of times. I think anarchy leads to nothing by bloodshed, destruction, uh, bloodshed and destruction. And I think ultimately it leads inevitably to authoritarianism. So I hate anarchy. I, I hate that set of ideas. And I'm hostile to particularly intellectuals who try to spread those ideas. And I've tried to interact as little as possible with them. But I don't, I don't hate other libertarians. I mean, I've, uh, there are many libertarians, uh, uh, economists, uh, political scientists who, again, I think do good work. Some people at Cato, not everybody. Some people at uh, Fee. Uh, I work with Fee. I've worked with Cato. I've worked with, you know, lots of different organizations over the years uh, on specific issues, on, um, on, you know, on broad issues that they were good at. But the, the, A, the idea of a big tent, I think, um, dilutes the philosophy to the point where it's meaningless. And it, as I said, I find anarchy offensive. So I, I'm not interested in being in a big tent with people I find offensive. So I think that, uh, so I have no, I don't reject, you know, I speak to libertarian groups all the time. I speak to Students for Liberty. I speak to uh, uh, Federalist Society, to Adam Smith societies, to all over the place. So I don't consider myself hostile to libertarianism. I consider myself hostile to anarcho-capitalists and I consider myself a hostile to the idea of a big tent. I think the idea of a big tent is bad. Uh, but regarding the anarchism, uh, I think that maybe those people maybe just don't understand it yet. They don't necessarily need to be uh, evil, evil persons, right? I've never said they're evil. I think some of them are evil. I think if you're, you know, you, you, you know, Hope, a few others, um, I, I, I would consider immoral, but um, no, I mean, particularly young people, I don't consider young anarchists evil. I think when you're young and you're still trying out ideas and anarchy has a certain logic to it and a certain rationalistic, you know, logic to it, beauty to it or whatever, um, sense to it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, you know, it's why I, I talk to people who are anarchists, why I try to, you know, uh, 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 convince them otherwise. Um, but but yes, we, you know, if you're an anarchist in your 40s, something's wrong. Well, but still, uh, we don't see you cross-posting much with uh, some libertarians. Like, I think you once told me uh, that you wouldn't, or maybe Tom Woods told me that you would never appear on his show. You I will never be on Tom Woods' show. No. Why? Because he's over 40 and he's, a, and he's an anarchist. I mean, that's it. If you're over 40 and an anarchist, I'm not sitting on stage with you. you you're, you're a bad person. It, it, this is not, these are not neutral ideas. And I said before, I'm passionate. I take ideas seriously. I take ideas seriously on how they impact your life and my life, my life primarily. Anarchy is a destructive ideology. I'm willing to tolerate it when you're young, because when you're young, you're still trying to figure out what's true and what's not. And you're experimenting with all kinds of ideas and you're trying to figure it out. At some point, my, my tolerance disappears and it goes away. And I'm not tolerant of anti-life ideas from people who should know better. And Tom Woods should know better. Now, it's not just that he's an anarchist. It's that he's, um, you know, he's, he's part of the Mises Institute, which is pro or semi-pro slavery in the South, right? It was anti the Civil War. That is, that has, you can find articles there, 
underlying racist agendas, not that Tom Woods is, but the organization is affiliated with is, that are pacifists, which I consider, you know, nutty. The pacifists, they're, they're anti-American in foreign policy, every sin in the world. They're pro Hugo Chavez. It's, it's why I hate Ron Paul. Hate Ron Paul, not just dislike Ron Paul. It's because he's pro Hugo Chavez, pro uh, Maduro's regime. So I, I will not deal with people who are over the certain age, let's say 40, who advocate ideas that I consider fundamentally anti-life and who might be confused with objectivism. So people like Tom Woods, Murray Rothbard, anybody affiliated with the Von Mises Institute, I mean, I find those ideas worse than the worst ideas of the left to logic and to some extent because these people claim to be Ayn Rand fans. They claim to be pro-liberty when they're exact opposite. They're anti -liberty. Now I become grumpy, right? Now I'm living up to my reputation. Um, it's, it, it really is, um, there is a fundamental philosophical, but not just philosophical in an abstraction. There's a fundamental difference between the kind of uh, libertarian, the, 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 the anarcho-capitalist of Tom Woods, and objectivism. These are philosophies that are completely opposite. They happen to have some agreement on economics. But with all due respect, economics is not that important. And I'm an economist, and it's not that important. But they have no relationship when it comes to morality. They have no relationship in epistemology. They have no relationship in metaphysics. And they don't have any relationship in, in politics, because the one's an anarchist and the one, one believes in actually limited government. So, and, and, and no relationship in aesthetics. So in 90% of the philosophy, we're opposed. And you want me to be their friend because of 10%. But I have more in common with leftists than with the anarcho-capitalists when it comes to the totality of their ideas. There is, there, is, there is two issues with that and uh, issues. Aaron, Aaron points out that, don't you think that the more good would do just go and debate him? You don't have to endorse him. And the second point is debating that- Debating somebody, let me just finish. Debating something is an endorsement. Debating somebody is a sanction. I, you know, I, there's, and there's no reason to debate him. That's, that's the bigger problem. A narco, you know, and again, I'm gonna insult some of you, but tough. A narco capitalism is not a legitimate ideology. It's not a legitimate set of ideas. It's not worthy of debate. It is a fringe, marginal, insignificant portion of the world is an capitalist And most people grow out of it relatively quickly, right? So again, they're not that many over 40. And it's just not worth debating. I mean, I did that debate in Poland. I've done it once. Anybody can go watch it. And if, if you don't, you know, if, if that's not good enough, then, you know, you're gonna have to figure it out yourselves. Yaron hated this debate. He didn't want to come. Uh, I was not sure if even this is going to happen. I mean, and it, since then, since then, Yaron mentions this debate like every time. time. I, so I guess, I guess. I, I did guess. hate it. And, I, and, and it, there's a sense in which I'm glad I didn't. There's a sense in which I feel a little dirty for doing it. I mean, he was there defending, you know, sex with children. I mean, or, or he couldn't argue against it. I mean, I can't think of anything more where I want to wash my hands and stay away. Uh, you can check the recording and at objectivism.pl. It was uh, yeah, I don't remember the title. I will post it in the in the event afterwards. Easy to find. All you do is do Iran Iran broke anarchy, and that's the first hit you get on YouTube. All right, and if you want to support this. Uh, not so grumpy man in headphones. You can go to yaronbrookshow.com and check all the- Here's a uh, question Adam asked, so I might as well answer it because it's related. He says, couldn't you make the same argument against objectivism? Fringe only small portion of people in the world are objectivists. True, absolutely true. And I'm always surprised why people agree to debate an objectivist. Um, you know, and, and I always say, when somebody says, I don't want to debate you, you're on, I always say, I understand him completely. He's got nothing to debate, he's got nothing to gain by debating me. And I don't blame people for not debating me. I go, yeah, I mean, why, let's say, I don't know, Steven Pinker. Why doesn't Steven Pinker agree to appear on stage with me? Because he's got nothing to gain and everything to lose by it. So I am, objectivism is fringe and small. 
Absolutely. I happen to be in that fringe and small. If I'm going to go and debate, if I want to grow the movement, I'm not going to grow the movement by going to another fringe and small and, and even less reputable group than objectivists, which is the anarcho-capitalists. I would much rather go to big groups where I can get lots of people like leftists and conservatives and then I can own people in the middle and then I can get a lot of people. But why would I go f- being fringe to another fringe little group and, and, and argue about minutia at, in front of, you know, 17 people who, who already d- made up their mind, right? I would much rather go to big audiences and big groups and debate big issues. Um, and, and that happens to be the left and the right. It, one of the problems that I find with libertarians is they love to argue among themselves. Well, it's so who, do, so it's who is the perfect audience for for you and objectivists to go and if if not uh, Tom Woods' uh, audience of the podcast? I can tell you the audience that has been most success, the appearance that I made, that has been most successful for me by far. It's not even close, right? In terms of subscribers, followers, all of that, is when I first appeared on Dave Rubin. Now, in those days, Dave Rubin's audience has changed. But in those days, who was Dave Rubin's audience? It was left, science and reason respecting. That's who the audience. My ideal audience is not religious, respect right, reason and science, tilting a little left. That's my best audience. And it's always been my best audience. The problem is getting them in the room because they hear Ayn Rand and they run or they hear capitalism and they run. The beauty of somebody like Dave Rubin is you could get in and they were listening to him and we had this great conversation, which turned, I've got more people have come to me and said, wow, I started reading Ayn Rand because of your appearance on Dave Rubin than anything else I've ever done. It's people like that. You know, I would much rather go on Dave Rubin's show than Tom's Woods show. Tom Woods show, everybody who listens to Tom Woods, not everybody, 70% 70% of people who listen to Tom Woods already know I exist have probably listened to something I've already done and decided, you know, to dismiss me and go with Tom Woods. What do I gain by going to Tom Woods versus going on, you know, if I could go on Joe Rogan's show, that would be great. You know, get exposed to millions of new people, uh, people who are generally thinking, generally listening, generally engaged in the culture. That is like a million times better than going to another libertarian event. People, you know, Mark Skousen wants me to come to Freedom Fest. And Freedom Fest is wonderful. But again, it's this, I want virgins. I, for those of you who don't know what I mean by virgins, people who've never been exposed to their ideas, people who are new, people who maybe know a little bit, but don't know that much. That's, look, I'm not a philosopher. So my job is not to take people who know something about objectivism and make them really deep intellectuals. My job is to expose people who don't know much about their ideas to their ideas in a legitimate, interesting, uh, I- legitimate, interesting way. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time, so I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, If you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourronbrookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, Your Book Show, and, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...